So The Hill and many other outlets are really baffled that old shows are beating out all the new stuff. They can't believe it. Why? Why is this happening? I can't believe it. I can't believe that these older shows are beating the new shows. Well, I'm sure for many of you out there, you're not confused on this. This actually makes a lot of sense. There's tons of old content, and it's better than a lot of the garbage that comes out today. I just always find it funny when these outlets try to reason why. Why this is happening? I can't believe it. They'd rather watch Friends than She-Hulk? Why? So they try to figure out why this happened. And a lot of these excuses are like the coof and people wanted something familiar or well, it's actually because these shows have extensive catalogs with, you know, tons of episodes. That's why they rack up the minutes. That's not entirely true. Some of these other shows would rack up minutes as well if they were, I don't know, good Listen to this. The most streamed show last year wasn't the latest Netflix reality TV show craze, nor was it the highly anticipated final season of Succession or the debut of The Last of Us. According to Nielsen, the most minutes last year, more than $57 billion, were spent watching Suits, a legal drama that premiered 12 years prior. The show, which is available to stream on Netflix and Peacock, stars the former actress Meghan Markle and likely has her to thank for its second life. I don't think so. But Suits isn't the exception. I don't think so. I've never watched that show, but I actually hear people like it. I don't think it has anything to do with her because, to be honest, she's not that popular. Most people don't like her. Uh, I think people that are watching that show are just watching it because of, because of what it is. Uh, old shows, which debuted over a decade ago, dominated the top streamed List of 2023, several of the programs, including Suits, are Gilmore Girls and Friends. And they've been off the air for years. So here is the list. And it's pretty telling. You've got some shows on here that are to the present. But for the most part, all these are old shows, even if they do still go to the present. Now, I didn't even know NCIS is still going or Grey's Anatomy. Those are still going. That's crazy. At least that's what they're saying here to the present. But Suits, Bluey, NCIS, Grey's Anatomy, Coco Melon, The Big Bang Theory, Gilmore Girls, Friends, Heartland, Supernatural. Those are the biggest shows of 2023. Now they're blaming the strike and all of these other shows. Like, so they blame the strike and the coof. That's why That's why these shows are, are big. Uh, there's a lot of shows that have come out. Since, I don't know, 2016. Where are they? Where are they at? They're not on here. People want to watch good entertainment. They're not getting good modern entertainment. Modern entertainment sucks ass. It's all about the message. Not so much with these older shows. These older shows are just trying to tell stories. And boom, they show up as the top shows. I think it's funny. Uh, here's some more. Nielsen also ranked the top 10 original streaming shows, but none of them reached the same volume of time watched as the acquired programs did. The top 10 original streamed shows last year were these right here. I don't know a lot about most of these shows, but uh, there's this list. But it is funny to me that the most watched shows are all shows from the 90s, which is Friends, or the early 2000s. I think it's pretty damn telling. And Hollywood should be a, a sh not ashamed. Well, they should be ashamed, but they should really be embarrassed. Nothing they put out beats the stuff they used to make. And, you know, I don't know what fixes this. Well, not, well, I do know what fixes this. They need to stop telling a message and actually get back to doing good stories and good comedy. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. So I think this you're going to see this again in 2024 when they release the most uh, watched shows. It's going to be these shows again. 
because people are going to watch these and say, hey, buddy, you should go watch this show. It's actually good. Yeah, you should go watch this show. And then they'll tell somebody, and they'll tell somebody, and so on and so on. Uh, but they, uh, th- they're getting tore up over on Twitter. And it's funny. Like, they, they post this, and they know why. Top stream shows are almost all old. Why? They know why. Uh, but they're going to try to damage control and go around the fact, you know, that most of the new stuff is all woke garbage. And uh, just about all these comments on here, like, because the writing now is trash, because everything new is woke garbage. Old shows didn't have DEI agenda. New shows are all woke garbage. Writing is terrible and casts are ugly. You know why. Guess what? And they have a critical drinker there. It's because they put entertainment before messaging. It all went woke. Like Everybody in these comments is tearing it up, and I think it's funny. They know why. They just don't want to admit it. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.